Okay, I wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed playing Splinter Cell Blacklist. I really liked this game. All the Splinter Cells are stealth oriented, but this game adds the ability to use guns a little bit more, which I enjoy a lot. Anyway, you can't really do run and gun in this game without getting slaughtered, but if you're doing stealth, you can do it pretty well. As I'm showing all of the different missions that are available, there's approximately 21 different missions you can play in this game. It reminds me a whole lot of uh, Hitman, where you can explore your environment and figure out the best approaches to get through different sections to be successful. So the first thing you're going to find is that if you don't have everything upgraded, you're very limited in what you can do and what you can accomplish. So the, f the best thing to do is to load up your stealth uh, suit completely to the highest level because at the highest level you get to have more gadgets. You get up to eight gadgets as opposed to you start off with, I think, three. And three gadgets isn't going to do you any good. I mean, you're going to have no ability to do a uh, multiple wave embassy mission with three gadgets. You're just not going to be able to do it, even if you're very talented. You also can't sneak up on anybody unless your stealth level is really high, so forget attacking somebody from behind. So you're going to need money t in order to buy all these things, and you're probably going to need over a million dollars, realistically. And then, on top of that, once you get your suit completely upgraded and all the gadgets you need, then you're going to need to have some skills and understand the way the game plays and the way the AI interacts with you. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time surviving. But the first objective would be to gather money and to buy all of the upgrades for the stealth uh, op spec op suit and your guns. I would not get any of the combat stuff, only the stealth stuff. And to give you an idea of what they start off with, here's the first pants. It cost $40,000 for the tactical mesh. So you buy, you have to buy each of the lower versions in order to get the highest version. So you have to buy it. So the first thing you have to do is you have to do uh, Grimm's Daughter's missions in order to be able to buy the upgrades. So that's what I would recommend doing. They're probably easier than doing Charlie's missions because with Charlie's missions, unless you're upgraded, you're not going to be able to survive five waves. It's just impossible. So, but you can do these and um, Grimm's Daughter's missions, and you can get money and um, experience from doing them. The most fun of a video game is exploring on your own, so I would do all the exploring and go through it a bunch of times on your own before I watch somebody else play it, because they're going to show you things that maybe you didn't see before, and you, you're going to miss out on that opportunity of self-discovery. This is Border Crossing, one of Grimm's Daughter's uh, missions, and uh, in it you'll see that I don't, I'm not fully upgraded at all here, and what I'm doing is using the standard supplied uh, stun gun. This is my favorite mission for grinding money and just building up money in the beginning of the game. So this is Hacker's Den. It's a Grimm's Daughter mission. You can't alert anybody. This is on uh, Ghost. This is Ghost and on um, Perfectionist, the highest level. So you can see that I didn't alert anybody and I got the big, biggest score possible, and it was $186,000. So you'd have to do it repeatedly a few times. It took uh, six minutes. Of course, uh, you're going to fail a few times, and so it's going to actually be more like 10 minutes or 20 minutes to complete, maybe. But the way I did it is very easy to not be seen, and it's pretty airtight. So it's rare that you get seen anyway. It's not a speed run. I took my time and I watched for the guards that would be able to see me and I think the time I took it in was, there you go, 5 minutes and 45 seconds and I got $186,000 and it's on um, Perfectionist and I ghosted it so it's easy to do. So now I'm fully upgraded, I have all the stealth stuff and all the toys and guns and gadgets. And I'm um, just showing you this little speeded up version of the first part of the opium mission. And the crossbow is an unbelievably um, useful tool here. I mean, you just basically can't do these things without the crossbow. Once you go on perfectionist, 
it, you go down from having three uh, gas grenades to two. Whereas the bow, you still get like 12 uh, gas arrows. So imagine if you were limited to like eight or something like that. The other thing about perfectionist is that you don't get to go to the gun uh, case and restock your supplies. So you have to do the whole mission without restocking your supplies. One thing you can do, though, is there's usually a checkpoint, like in the middle of this, between the first section and the second section, there's a checkpoint. So I always uh, restart the second part because, um, for some reason, I don't, whatever I've used in the first section, I don't get restocked for the second section like I should. But if I restart the second section, then I'm full up again on ammo and proxy mines and all that. So I hope this was helpful and having some a little extra enjoyment of playing the game and some ways of going about it and seeing if you like doing this kind of thing or not. Have fun with it.